Hank here for Free Podcast Tools with another video about the Mixcast 4 voice settings. So on this video, we're going to cover the deesser, and the deesser simply acts to reduce some of the sibilance of your voice. So inside the manual deesser settings, the default is set to negative 52 dB. That's the threshold. So when sibilance is above that limit, this will start working and they have the frequency set to 4,000 Hertz. This isn't a locked in place rule. Typically male sibilance will be roughly between 3,000 and 7,000 Hertz and female sibilance can be in the upper ranges of 5,000 to 9,000 Hertz. It's very much dependent on your voice and believe it or not, a lot of dental work can impact sibilance as well or simply how you pronounce words. In future videos, I'll go over some of the things I've learned over the years where you are able to try to reduce sibilance just by the way you speak. But this video is just focusing on this. So the problem with this setting is, what if you don't know where your sibilance lies? You could try to combat this in a couple of different ways. The long way, you could set this setting, start at the very bottom, and move it in increments until you notice your sibilance coming down. That could take a considerable amount of time and it might be a bit boring to do or your ears might start playing tricks on you and you start getting rid of stuff you wanna save and missing that trouble frequency. What sibilance at its core really is, is a shrill sound that is like sticking needles in your ears. You will simply know it when you hear it. My personal setting on the Mixcast 4 is negative 50 dB and my trouble frequency is 6,000 Hertz. So I notice when microphones have a bump in that area, I end up sounding more sibilant than on microphones that are either flat or have a little dip in that area. So I was going to pair this out into another video, but I am going to show you quickly how I find sibilance on myself and on my co-hosts. All right, so I'm going to link to the website that I got this plugin from. It was really inexpensive, but it helped me out greatly when finding sibilance. And this is what I do. So in my audio editing course, I created a small little file sample where I just over exaggerate S's. So I'll let you hear it on here. Susie said she wanted to sing a song. So as you can see, I just gone way overboard right there with that. Why I did that is so I could find where the trouble frequencies are easier in that training video. So essentially what I do is up here you have the frequencies. I have 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000 hertz. And now I'm just going to turn on one at a time until I find the one that's bothering me. So here's 4,000 hertz, and let's take a listen. Susie said she wanted to sing a song. So there's some shrillness there, but it is um, not necessarily sticking needles in my ears yet. So let's go to 5,000. We turned off 4,000, we turn on 5,000. Susie said Ooh. she wanted to sing a song. That's pretty painful, but I think it gets worse. Let's go to 6,000. Susie said. There it is. She wanted to sing a song. That is that shrill sound that'll bring you to your knees right there. And that's what I was looking for uh, is that 6,000 hertz. Now, you feel like you're hearing it at 4,000, 5,000, but that 6,000, I squinted my eyes. I want to plug my ears instantly. That's what shrill S's do to people. They're very off-putting. And they're just like somebody's taking a literal needle and just stabbing it into your ears. And you can turn off an audience quickly if all of your content is really bad like that. Another thing people do that I don't do is they'll load a different type of EQ. So they'll take an EQ like this. People will take these points, and let's say we get up here a little bit. We did a little 
So as you can see, you can just keep sweeping through here. People will do the boost sweep. And to me, any frequency that's boosted is going to sound horrific. But I understand why they do it that way. But I will preferably do like a little dip, a little cut. You're just attenuating harsh frequencies. So it's just some ideas, a little starting point for you. But I hope that helps you out a little bit. Thank you for checking this one out. Next time, we're going to talk a little bit about noise suppression and why I don't even use it. And then remember, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll whenever the Mixcast 4 update launches. I'm going to be ready to rock and roll, and I am going to be here with all the information on that launch, whenever it may be. So stay tuned to the channel. Please subscribe, like this video, share it to others who you think it might help. Until next time, thank you.